Hi, I'm Joe Cochran, founder of Comfort Tac, and today I'm really excited because we just received our reset trigger for the Glock 19. And this reset trigger is going to help us with our dry fire practice. Uh, it's just going to make things easier. It's also going to allow us to do a lot of other different drills. So before I get into it specifically, I just want to kind of show you the setup with what we've got going on here. So if you're not following our series called Becoming a Better Shooter on YouTube, um, this is all kind of part of that series. So I started the series called Becoming a Better Shooter in an attempt to actually become a better shooter myself. And uh, specifically, I'll be using dry fire practice and dry fire drills to do that. And so I've created a um, calendar to shoot, uh, to do dry fire practice, as well as some live fire practice. But about 80% or so of my actual trigger time is going to be dry fire. We purchased the, uh, this is called the Laser Pet, stands for Personal Electronic Target. It's made by a company called Laser Ammo. And what it does is it has different modes, so you can kind of power it up. This is shot timer mode. It'll come on, it will beep like a shot timer. You are to shoot it now, it'll keep running until you shoot it. And then in our Glock 19, this is my concealed carry Glock 19, the, th the gun I carry every day, I've converted it to shoot the laser. So it's got the Sure Strike laser from Laser Ammo as well. And so I've already cleared the firearm. It's got the uh, trainer tip on it. And so what happens is when you shoot the target with the laser, it stops the target and will reset. And then you can shoot it again. The challenge that I've been having is that once you pull the trigger, you have to rack the slide to reset that trigger before you can pull that again and shoot that laser again. And so for practicing things like double taps or shooting multiple targets, um, shooting on the move and shooting multiple targets, all of those things, it's very difficult to do with this because obviously you got to reset the target every time to get that real feel. And uh, so I went out looking for something to solve that and laser ammo provided uh, an option for that, which is this reset trigger system. And so the reset trigger system actually replaces your factory Glock trigger with a new trigger and a new firing pin. And it allows you to continuously pull that trigger and shoot the laser uh, without having to rack the slide. So we're gonna go ahead and install this in the gun right now. All right, this is my Glock 19. It's a Gen 4 Glock 19. This is my everyday carry gun. It's bone stock except for I do have the um, Trigicon HD night sights on it, and I did a 25 cent trigger job on it. If you don't know what that is, Google it uh, or search on YouTube and you can see videos of guys doing it. It's just polishing the trigger mechanism. So uh, that's that. Let's go ahead and get the trigger the reset trigger open and check that out, see what we got here. So as you can see, it does come with the striker as well as a complete trigger assembly. And this is for specifically for a Gen 4. They make them for Gen 4, Gen 3. I don't know if they go back past Gen 3. Um, and they make them for all different calibers. So you do gotta make sure that you purchase the proper trigger kit for your generation Glock. There's that. We've got a spring kit and some instructions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions. Just make sure we understand how to install it. Okay, it looks pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and we'll break down our Glock and then we will get to work on the rest of it. So just like any other time, you want to check, make sure you're clear. We're going to drop this mag. We've got no ammo in the gun. We've got the, the laser. So we're going to go ahead and drop the trigger and then remove the slide. Now we've got two sections. We've got to install the trigger and we've got to install that striker. So we're going to start with the striker. So first, just remove the trigger, I'm sorry, the uh, barrel. It's 
a little trickier to remove when you've got this um, this laser sight in there. I probably should have removed it before I tried to take it out. Okay, so there's our assembly here. We will go ahead and remove this back plate. I take my Glock tool and I just depress this little plastic section here, push that down. That takes the pressure off the back plate and then keep your thumb over top of that because there's a spring with pressure behind it so it doesn't go flying out. So we move, remove our striker that's in there. And one thing you'll notice is that the, uh, there's a difference in size. This is an extended length striker that came with it. That's to allow it to reset and keep firing without the slide actually having to reset and, and rack it that way. So it's just a, a little bit longer. You want to keep that in mind when you go to put this back together for use. We're going to depress here, pull out the extractor, and then we'll remove that plunger pin. There we go. So we're going to set these back aside. These don't have to go back in the gun. Um, and actually, I, I uh, checked here and it, the, uh, the, it really won't go back in the gun very smooth. So we're just going to leave those out. We'll leave out this since that's done. And we'll go ahead and insert our extended length extractor. So that's going to go in first. Then one of these springs, the instructions didn't say which one to use. There's a long one and two short ones. I assume I didn't see any use for the long one and I assumed the two short ones were just two just because one's a backup. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and install one here. And what we're doing here is we're installing this spring so that when the striker is pulled back the spring will actually launch it forward to hit our laser cartridge. So that's what that functions as. And that's all we got to do here. So we got to put this back together. To do that, we just push this down, put our back plate back on, and that's it. Our slide's back together. Now for our trigger assembly, we just disassemble this just like any other time. I've got my Glock tool here. Push our three punches out. So we got pin number one. Pin number two, we usually got to wiggle the uh, slide release a little bit to get that to let go. Pin number three is the plastic pin in the back here. This holds the whole trigger, trigger assembly in. So those three pins are out. We can remove the slide release, we remove the block, and now the entire trigger assembly pops out. And you heard me say I did a 25 cent trigger job on my Glock. All that is is just polishing all of this. So I disassembled all this, I polished it all, I polished the block. Um, what I find is by spending a little extra time on this section here with polish and just smoothing that out, uh, I use my Dremel and I use Flitz polish to do it. Um, it just gives it a little bit of a smoother pull and it'll reduce the trigger pull by half a pound or a pound. It's not a major difference in the amount of trigger pull, but it does smooth it out a little bit. So I like to do that with all my Glocks. So we're going to set this aside because that's not going to go back in the gun because we have the uh, replacement trigger. And if you really look closely, it's this top section with this big spring here versus this section, which has just this tiny spring in here that's very different between the two. Uh, I don't know exactly all the, the differences, but um, Supposedly it works. So let's go ahead and get it in the gun. These just drop back in. This is one of the things I just absolutely love about Glocks. It's how easy, simple they are to work on. Um, if you have to do any maintenance or repairs, it's quite easy to do. So we've got those back in. We'll put our pins back in. I always push the pins in through the right side. There we go. Get 
that one about halfway in, put our slide release back on. Top pin in. Okay, so those are our components there. We should be able to put this back together. Now when you're putting this back in, if you're gonna leave the um, laser in like I did, you just gotta lift the striker up so you can drop that in. spring in and we should see a laser strike and we should be able to just keep pulling our trigger and see a laser strike all right so that's very cool that's our reset trigger it's um, it actually feels a lot like a stock trigger um, it's got that that click and reset. Not exactly the same reset, not exactly the same pull, but it feels very good. Let's go ahead and uh, get this cleaned up and we'll give it some tests. All right, so here we are in my little makeshift range in my office. And what I've got laid out here is a three target shoot. The SureStrike laser that, uh, that I purchased came with six of these little reflective targets. And they're pretty cool because when you shoot them, they give uh, a brighter kind of reflection of the laser back. It's a very good indicator that you've hit the target. I can show you here on my backdrop, if you hit the backer instead of the target, you just get that dull uh, red light, whereas when you hit the target, you get a really nice reflective response. So you know you hit the target when you hit these, and they're pretty cool. So that gonna, that's gonna allow me to lay out this three target system where I will have a target left, a target right, and then my laser pet, the uh, personal electronic target in the center. I'm gonna set it to the shot timer mode. So my goal is when the timer starts, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna shoot my target left, I'm gonna shoot my target right, and then I'm gonna shoot the center target to stop the clock. The goal ultimately is not to make any misses, and to improve the speed moving from multiple targets. This is gonna help you uh, shoot multiple targets, gonna help you pick up your sights on the move, and there's just a lot of benefits to this kind of training. So let's go ahead and shoot a few rounds and just check it out. We're already on number two, so we're ready. Just gonna shoot a few slow here, get the hang of it. 6.51 seconds. Four point six one seconds. Four point one five seconds. And you can just kind of speed up to your own pace. Once you start missing shots, you know you're going a little too fast. You can see the benefit of this reset trigger though. I'm not having to rack the slide for all of these. It gives you a much more realistic um, shooting training here. 4.38 seconds and I think you get the idea so with this setup now let me kill this uh, timer so with this setup now I can shoot multiple targets I can do multiple trigger pulls again you could shoot one one target multiple times and you're gonna get that feedback it's constantly resetting I can switch from left to right do double taps however you want to practice, and I'm not having to constantly reset the slide. All right, so let's break down the math of what we got so far. We've got the reset trigger for $200.
We've got the Sure Strike laser cartridge for $200, and we've got the Laser Pet personal electronic target for, I think it was about $150. So we've got about $550 invested in this dry fire setup right now. And um, also we're using my Glock 19, uh, which is my concealed carry gun. Now, admittedly, if I were gonna do this a lot, I would probably actually just wanna go out and buy another gun because uh, to install that reset trigger and then swap that out every day that you're gonna do dry fire practice, a little bit of effort. Um, it's not difficult to do, but do you really wanna do that all the time? Uh, I'm kinda lazy, I don't wanna do that, so I would probably opt to purchase a second Glock 19 outfitted exactly like this one is, so I've got two identical guns, get my dry fire training in on a dedicated gun, and then carry um, my second gun that I don't have to mess with all the time. But if you take just the cost of the dry fire gear that I've purchased so far, we're at $550. If you figure that I'm purchasing ammunition in bulk, I buy about a thousand rounds at a time, it costs me around 19 to 20 cents per round after shipping and everything, I buy it online. So 20 cents around, $550. Um, we're looking at about 2,750 rounds of ammunition is what I could have bought for this setup. And that's 2,750 trigger pulls in my mind. That's how I'm looking at this. So once I've surpassed 2,750 trigger pulls on this setup, I'm actually starting to get my money's worth out of this. What I've counted so far is that in a typical dry fire round, I'm shooting a couple hundred pulls. I'm, I'm pulling the trigger a couple hundred times, two, three, four hundred. If it's a long uh, dry fire round, I might even pull four or five hundred times. Um, it's not difficult to do that in dry fire. So realistically, in my mind, after, you know, say 10 dry fire sessions, I'm already getting more trigger time than if I was doing just live fire drills. So I think it's very practical. Um, if you don't have the resources for all of this stuff, you can definitely do it without buying the reset trigger and just fake pull. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's better than not doing anything at all. So dry fire drills without the reset trigger, perfectly fine. Now you would only be into it um, $250. So just you know, do the math. Obviously, you gotta stick within your own resources. Uh, this was something that I've been wanting to do, saving for a while to be able to set up and get into. And so I'm jumping all in and I wanna get as much trigger time and as much practice as I can and uh, enjoy the system. So thanks for watching. If you wanna support our channel, head over to comforttech.com, pick up one of your own uh, belly band holsters or one of our other holsters. Thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like the channel.